welcome back to the second part of the Intro to GraphPad PRISM tutorial. Today we'll be looking at methods to navigate through the different windows and the various graphing options available to us. So let's get started. First, let's open the linear regression tutorial data. Uh, just as an example, we won't pay attention to the actual analysis. Right away, you'll see that the tutorials include annotations with some background information and how to perform the analysis. Usually they'll include uh, a link to their website if you want to learn more, and I highly recommend you click on that. Now let's take a look at the navigator on the left. GraphPad allows you to stay organized in your analysis. It makes it easy for you to track your steps. So under the purple family of folder, we can see all the active sheets, including the graphs. It's basically a way to find all your sheets in one folder. And if you'd like to color the name of your sheet in the navigator, it can be done in the Sheets menu above by clicking on this right here. Next, we have our data tables. So this is where you'll paste or import your data from Excel. A CSV file can also be important, or even a text file. I recommend just copying and pasting from Excel and doing the formatting in Excel itself. If you somehow need your rows and columns to be flipped, then you can select the Paste Data Transposed under the clipboard paste special menu, or you can just press Control shift t If you need to alter the data table type, you can either click at the top left corner of the table, or you can go uh, under the change bar and change data table type. So there are a few other noteworthy options in the change menu. If you'd like to add or remove columns or rows, you can use these up here. Um, this button over here allows you to sort your data. Um, you can also choose the number of sig figs over here. And this one over here allows you to insert a sequence of numbers with a given interval in between them. So let's say from 0 to 10 with 1 between each number. Um, if you want to add a bit of color, then you can use the button here. It'll allow you to color the cells. And you can just label the different categories with different colors. It makes it easier to see and look at when you come back to it at a later time. So under the data tables folder in the navigator, we have the info folder. In here, you can document what the analysis relates to a bit better. It's completely optional, but if you have a lot of people working on the same project and you want to keep track of each person's contribution, then this can be quite useful. Now let's try analyzing the data and see what that looks like. So under the analyze menu here, we can click analyze button or in our case, we can just directly click the linear regression button above. Since we're not making a standard curve, we'll select test whether slopes and intercepts are significantly different under the compare bar. Um, this is exactly what was written in the annotation. This is what GraphPad recommends. And then we'll just accept the rest of the defaults. So the analysis sheets will vary depending on what type of analysis you're doing, but you can quickly recognize them by their red grids. Alternatively, you can transform your data. It's under the same analysis menu. Um, and when you accept all the defaults or whatever for those, uh, it'll be displayed in a green grid. Um, and then you can just directly uh, analyze your, your transformed or normalized data from there. So a quick note about experimental planning uh, is that you should know what you're going to be doing to your data before actually looking at it, meaning that you should know whether you'll be transforming it, if you're going to be eliminating outliers, and what type of statistical analysis you'll be doing. So above here, you'll see the interpret button. Clicking on this will bring you to GraphPad's website, and it'll show you a checklist of the considerations that need to be kept in mind for a specific analysis. So let's say, for example, um, whether normality is assumed. If your data doesn't fit the criteria, maybe you should consider doing another test. Um, a great way to intuitively know which test is the right one for you is to practice and take maybe take a stats course, or at least read up on the documentation. If you have uh, many different but similar experiments to analyze, so um, let's say you have three cell lines that were treated with the same, the same drugs, um, you can do the analysis on just one of them and basically uh, copy the analysis over to your other data. So this can be done using the wand tool in the analysis menu. 
and then you uh, just select the analysis you want to replicate. So it'll basically analyze the data in the exact same way, including transformations, and it'll display identical graphs, but with the right data. So lastly, for the analysis section, you'll see a red table in the change menu. Uh, this will allow you to change the analysis or the data to, anal uh, to analyze. Now let's get to the fun part. Um, so within the graphs menu, you can do a lot to make the most of your data. So you can choose the representation or change it later uh, using the top left button in the change menu over here. You can also format your axes uh, and the graph itself. A lot of the options that are available in the toolbar above, um, you can just access by right clicking on the axis or on the bar or on the data point, um, or you can even double click. Um, I personally like adding a bit of color to the graphs, which can be done uh, using this color option over here. You can select your own if you want, it's totally up to you. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how that's done. Um, many of the other options are, are pretty self-explanatory, um, but one of the nicest options by far is the wand tool. So this plays a similar role to the analysis wand tool, but it's for graphs, so it allows you to make them consistent. Um, so if you've done most of the analysis of your data already, and your graphs are kind of looking different, but they should be looking the same and you want to make them consistent, then uh, you would be using this wand tool here. So you can select multiple sheets or multiple graphs at the same time, click on the wand tool like this, and then you can select um, basically which graph you want them to look like. And then it'll show you a preview. You can select exactly what you want to mimic and select OK, and then you'll see everything has changed. Um, over here you have buttons to um, export to Word or PowerPoint directly, and these exports are uh, embedded. So basically, in Word, you can double-click on it, and it'll open up in GraphPad. And if you change something there, it'll be reflected in, in Word itself. There are other export options up here, uh, I'll let you explore those uh, just for the sake of time. I think we're running a bit longer than last time. So lastly, we have the Layouts menu. This allows you to format your graphs on a single page. Uh, you can align them and make them the same size. It's, it's perfect for making figures and for reports. Uh, you can select from the presets or you can just create your own. It really depends on, um, on what you need. Um, you can just drag and drop from the graphs menu um, right into the boxes. Then you can align them. So you can align the y axes, the x axes. It's really up to you. You can resize them to make them the same. There's a lot of, a lot of options. Um, and any change that you do within the graphs under the graphs menu, then um, it'll be reflected in the sheets. So before ending, I just want to go over this toolbar at the bottom. So the two green arrows allow you to scroll through the different sheets in the navigator. Um, the ping pong icon allows you to go back and forth between two sheets. It's quite useful if you have to take values from one and put them in the other. And the binocular icon allows you to search for a specific sheet. So that's all for today. Uh, hopefully you have a better grasp of the options available to you in GraphPad. There are countless others, and I've only really presented the surface, but for now it should be sufficient. Next episode, we'll be looking at the chi-square test on Mendel's P's. So hope to see you there.